The way we instill a culture of continuous improvement in our company is really to focus first on culture. We had our employees develop our vision statement and all of our cultural values, so they live it. And I think that's the key thing. It's not all about cost savings. It's all about building a culture, and it's all about um, you know, identifying a purpose of that, always remembering the, to keep our customer you know, on our mind in innovation, um, continuing to uh, move forward. You have to be able to ask for things that people would say, well, that's not the way it's done. But to be able to ask and to push that envelope has really made a big difference, both in me personally and I think for the organization. For us, I think it's the way that you live. You have to have people that wake up every day wanting to do something better, thinking about how to do things better. And um, I think we have a whole bunch of people that, that really act that way. There is no greater motivator uh, than seeing a child between the ages of three and five who you know that if you don't do your job well that they're not going to get a quality preschool education and if they don't get that for the rest of their life they're going to be playing catch up. The best piece of advice that's ever been given to me is to find good mentors. Uh, I couldn't do what I'm doing if it weren't for the people who have been there when I've had questions, have doubts, uh, and keep me on, on the road to success. Really understand the people around you and to utilize and work with people and get the best you can out of working with it. You're only as good as the team around you. Sometimes you can say a lot by saying nothing. It drives people to want to fill that void, and when they fill that void, you'll sometimes be surprised at uh, what you hear and what they come up with. Always ask for help. Make sure that you reach out to people in the field, to leaders, to people who maybe are more junior than you. Ask the question of what we can do together. I think we demonstrate really worldwide industry leadership. Um, we're one of the leading science centers, not just in the country, but in the world. I'm on the executive committee of the Association of Science and Technology Centers, and recently appointed to the board of the museum of the Deutsches Museum in Munich, Germany. Talking about helping people meet their basic needs is really something that you can connect in your gut and in your heart to the fact that when we're better, when we're more efficient, we can help more people eat or heat their homes or afford shelter. The one thing, uh, and it really hits to the heart of how we run our business, treat people with dignity and respect. It goes such a long way and, and it permeates in our company everything from, from my office all the way down to the mailroom. Let me tell you something, kid, he said, I hire people who agree with me about 70% of the time. So because that 30% makes it all worth it. Makes me think more, challenges my observations to hopefully make me a better leader. What we've been able to do in North America is to be able to build a relationship between our customer and ourselves that is relying upon each other. So on the one hand, we try to make sure that the workplace is a happy place and that people are collegial, have fun. We have weekly staff meetings and we start each staff meeting with a fun maker to just break the ice and make sure that everybody recognizes we're all on the same team and we want to work together. It's actually kind of easy because it's literally life and death. And with that type of emotion, both on the donation side and the transplant side, it's an incredible feeling and we have really good longevity uh, in the organization. Asking uh, ourselves, asking every day, what is that experience like from the very first moment they walk into the door of the welcoming center um, through to uh, when they finally get placed in jobs or, or building their businesses. We don't lose contact with people, we stay in touch. I think one of my proudest moments uh, was when um, I was able to coordinate uh, one of the first heart transplants in Philadelphia, and you know, something I'll never forget. Um, I'd say the proudest moment of my career was the appointment as president of Ericsson USA. It, it has a, a world of potential, and I look forward to many, many years of, of, of leading this company into the future. I think the routine that I've really um, tried to learn and, and to use often to be an effective leader is active listening. At the end of the day, people want to work in an organization that's interested in them and that cares for them.